What to Tech is brought to you by Text Expander. Text Expander helps you communicate smarter. Visit TextExpander.com slash podcast for 20% off your first year. Hey everybody, welcome to What the Tech. I'm Andrew Zarian. Of course, I'm joined by Mr. Paul Thorat. How are you doing, Paul? How am I doing? I don't know. Hello. <laughs> Let me put my phone on mute. It's okay. Uh, we just <laughs> finished nice watching. You heard that incredibly loud, loud ding it, it, sound. It's ringing in my head right now. Uh, yeah. I We just watched the Google Pixel 4 event, and yep. I have to tell you, I'm still very sick. Uh, we're not doing the show live today. From the event? I'm sick, and I, it made me worse. Actually, <laughs> it brought back the pneumonia and the cough. Oh, it's man. now become something. I, I have to tell you, we're, we're going to talk about this event, but I, I'm just trying to envision how they piece this thing together. And they were all in a meeting, and they're like, "Hey guys, yep. Yep. you know that thing Apple did a couple of weeks ago? You know how they yeah. explained all their products and all the details mm-hmm. about it? Let's not do any of that." Yeah. Let's just talk about recyclables and renewables and how we are making a difference for culture. I mean, I I suspect, I mean, I think that I have to guess, right? The thinking here, I'm sure, was these events always follow a similar path. Obviously, we have modeled our events after Apple's. We should do something a little different this year, you know? The, the time that Samsung did this, something like this, was that year they did that kind of Broadway show thing and it was terrible and oh they never God, did yes. it again. Um, I, I I mean, on the one hand, I sort of appreciate them trying to go in a different direction. Um, but on the other, the direction they went in was terrible and boring. What and, direction um, was that? I, I found it to be kind of like a lecture. Like, I did, did I stumble <laughs> into a college ethics class? I mean, what, what is, you I don't know, exactly it's, it was very like. strange. And, yeah. and, you know, the problem with doing this is um, that the woman who was like, she sat down and she was talking really slowly and uh, she got exactly one little burst of golf clapping um, for something. I don't remember what it was. Um, she, <laughs> you know, she slipped in a product announcement. You weren't waiting for it. You weren't ready for it because the way she was talking was just about recyclables and the blah, blah, blah. And, and then. All of a sudden, she rolled it into, oh, and it's made up the rubber bottom of this thing. And you're like, oh, my God, she's actually talking about a product. It was a laptop wake up, announcement. Wake up. It was a laptop was... announcement. Yeah. I I don't I mean, that's <laughs> fine. You know, they make a laptop. They can announce it. It's it's OK. Um, but geez. so they announced a number of products here in, in the hour and 15 minutes that they went there. were There was actually a, a, a decent amount of products. Yeah. Uh, because of the convoluted nature of how they announce these products, yeah. I don't think like my takeaways for the products were had nothing to do with the product itself. Give an example. Yeah. They were yep. talking about Google's gaming platform, their cloud based gaming platform, right. right, which is launching on the 19th of November. So a month from now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they're talking about this announcement. Do you know what my takeaway from it was? No. That they have made a controller that fits into everybody's hand. Oh, see, mine was that they made a controller with no visible screws. Like <laughs> this was, like, you know, this was like what they yeah. focused on. Yeah. Did you I, see my I, tweet about that? Yeah. I my so. Ah, oh, jeez. I mean, I'm a Microsoft guy, so uh, of course everything reminds me of something Microsoft did, and I distinctly remember when Windows Phone was first out in the market or coming out. You know, that first year, first two years. They spent an inordinate amount of time talking about this metro style design that they had to walk away from the name, you know, but the metro style design and, and my commentary about their endless discussions about why this was good design was if you have to explain it this hard, it's not good design. If this was a good design, it would be immediately apparent to anyone who saw it. And um, it, when you have to call out something like that, see what I wish I, I don't can't, I can't reach the PlayStation controller from here, but. You know, he mentioned like a screwless design, for example. So I, I, that caused me to pick up my Xbox controller. And I looked at it. And um, 
There are no screws, Andrew. This is not something new. There are no visible screws on this controller. So all they've done is something that other companies had done years and years ago. They created their first controller, and it's a lot like the stuff that's already in the market. So great. Like, I, to me, that's just the minimum. You know, like, it's not worth calling out. You either pick that thing up or you're showing a picture of it, and you can tell that it's well-made, or you suspect it's well-made if it's a photo, or not, you know? Listen, they 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 not only borrow the non-visible screw design from other other I main, I guess, you know, controllers because it's been going on for a while, but they also borrowed it from Apple's price point structure. Yeah. So what's the the entry level though is seven ninety nine. Now, of course, people are gonna compare this to the the iPhone eleven, right? The, the price point is not terrible. I, I, to be no, honest. No, it's not, but I well, yeah. no, but I was gonna say that's not actually a fair comparison. Um yeah. the iPhone eleven is a lower end device. It doesn't have the triple camera system of the pros. Uh, these pixels line up with the pros, right? Mm -hmm. And so the iPhone 11 Pro starts at, I don't even know its price, what price, $899 probably, something like that? Let me uh, go to Apple's website to make sure. I would imagine. And then probably $999 on the Max, maybe? Or is it $999 and $1099? I believe it is, let's see. It's so funny how when you go to Apple's site, they don't even tell you the price. At first glance, yeah, they tell course, you to trade in price. I don't yeah. want the trade in price. Uh, okay, so the iPhone 11 Pro starts at a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. So this is so the and the, the Pro Max is ten ninety nine. So the um, the Pixel Four, which is the smaller one, starts at sorry seven ninety nine. Yeah, seven ninety nine. Uh, it's two hundred bucks less. Mm -hmm. That actually is that's significant. And then nine, uh, well, it's uh, I might have the price wrong. Eight ninety nine for the sixty four gig XL is <laughs> I'm so terrible at math. Three hundred dollars less than yeah. the same Max. Um, so I mean, it is it is fairly cheaper. Yeah, no, it, it's fair to say you can buy a new iPhone of some kind that's cheaper than the Pixel four, but that iPhone is not as capable. Uh, and I don't think I really don't think it's fair to compare those things. But people will and. And whatever. Let's just agree they were kind of in the ballpark. And if you span the the price ranges, um, Google doesn't offer more than 120 gigs of storage, which is really kind of strange when you think about it. Um, you know, Apple's ranges are 64, 256, and 512, I imagine. Um, I think 256 would have been a more logical upper bound. Um, and if they're gonna if they can only have two sizes, I mean it should be 128, 256, but you know, yeah, whatever. So uh, uh, I want to I want to yeah. go through some of the other stuff before we get to the Pixel. Yeah, sorry. sorry. Uh, they announced yeah. Pixel Buds. Google's getting rid of the cable that runs between. I think we call it a pre-announce. Yeah. They pre-announce because here's the, here's the deal with this. They pre-announced it because it's not coming out till fall, uh, spring of spring. 2020. So this yeah. is nowhere near ready. Uh, it's a wireless earbud. So a, yeah, truly like a truly wireless we're gonna call earbud. it a truly wireless right i don't know what the difference would be between this and other well, I, could, I could show you the difference so okay. i have these uh, beats uh wireless headphones and you will notice uh if i can ever untangle them <laughs> sorry here uh geez paul okay sorry basic motor skills uh there is a wire <laughs> right okay but, but there's no wire going to the phone that's the the wireless now the, the new versions of these headphones there's no that wire in the middle doesn't exist doesn't exist there's two discrete pieces uh that you know they go in your and those are truly wireless so okay. google has what they used to bundle with their phones i don't think they do this anymore but they have these i think they're called pixel buds but this is like a wired headphone these are actually quite good by the way for what they are these are much better than anything that apple makes uh aside from the beat stuff um, and then last year, I don't know if it was last year or before, but the previous generation, uh, p like wireless pixel buds are the one with the on, well, actually this has voice assistant features too, but whatever the, the ones that look like the ones they showed today have a wire. So the ones they announced that aren't coming out until the spring, like AirPods or like galaxy buds have a little case that you can charge them wirelessly with. You get five hours oh, of battery life with them and up to 24 hours with the, um, charging case. Which is a false figure, um, because what that means is the case provides 19 hours worth of charge. So you, you get five hours, then you have to put them in the case. You're not getting 24 hours. You, you have yeah. to spend the time charging them, too. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I appreciate that they wirelessly charge the headphones. Everyone does that. Um, so they're a little bit behind, I think, is the way I would put it. But um, I don't know. I would never buy that, personally. Uh, listen, if you're in the Google ecosystem, why why not? You know, 
if, if that's but if what you're in the Google ecosystem, you are in the world of um, everything else. Just, everything works. So yeah. why would why wouldn't you just buy the best? Yeah, thing? I guess it's not a fair comparison to the Apple stuff, right? I, well, I don't think the Apple uh, the Apple stuff isn't. Um, oh, you mean in the sense that a lot of people will buy the Apple stuff because it is the Apple stuff. Like I don't because think anyone would Apple ever stuff, claim. Yeah. yeah, like the the AirPods don't have the best uh, quality or anything. They're just the ones people want because they're yeah. you know. Uh, uh, Google doesn't get that. The Nest Wi-Fi, the second generation Google Wi-Fi, uh, it's getting rid of the home branding. So now it's going to be yeah. called, uh, it's going under the Nest umbrella, which makes kind of sense there. Uh, the new Wi-Fi it, router. It makes includes... sense in the sense that they should have one brand for home, right? So yeah, I joked on Twitter today that apparently Google thought that the the best brand for home is Nest and not home, <laughs> you know, which is when you think about it, it's kind of strange, but um, Nest is unique. I think it's got a good brand, you know, awareness, whatever. So that's fine. I mean, that's fine. Uh, it's going to be, it's just an updated hardware of the current Wi-Fi router that they have. Uh, well, they actually, so that I would say it's a little different in the sense that it has a built-in home, like a, what we used to call home mini, right? So it has the assistant built in, a speaker built in. Um, and so it can do double duty like that. And, and it actually, also now has the uh, the Wi-Fi access point. Okay. When you bundle it, when you get the two pieces, it comes with. Yeah, like this. Okay, that one I didn't quite understand. So the, I I own the the current generation product, right? So the the Google Wi-Fi, which is what I use here in my home, which is fantastic, by the way. Um, the way that it works is, if you buy a three pack or if you buy more than one of them, you basically when you when you bring it up in the wizard for the first time to bring the thing online you can arbitrarily choose one of them to be the the first one it's not a true hub it just it happens to be the one you connect to your cable modem or whatever you have because they're all identical right so the other ones you can place around your house and they become like satellites essentially they're all peers really but one of them happens to be connected to your actual connection right so if, if I understand what you're saying, because I was too busy making fun of them to maybe hear this, um, you're saying that one of them is in fact a like a central point of some kind. Like yeah. A, so one is the the direct connection to your router or to your modem. Yeah. I should say. But but right? is it one? In other words, when you open the package, you actually that one is different. That one is different. That one connects it's physically different. Physically different. And then the okay. other one is the one that you could, you know, disperse around the house, depending if you want one or two or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah. You could just put it wherever you want. I do think, and I'm going to tell you, said this is the dumbest part of this, but I do think the best part of this device is the fact that they are branding this as something that could, you could have out. Right? They have, they have, well, their, their marketing yeah. campaign for this makes a lot of sense to me. I, I, I'm a marketer, so this is how I see things. They're telling you that the other routers are so ugly that you got to hide it away. With this, look, you could have so, it as a showpiece. For whatever it's worth, that's actually how they marketed the last one, too. No, um, no, no, absolutely. And, but I do think it's, but, it's a nice selling point for them. Yeah, and, and actually, this one, because it serves double duty, or actually you could say triple duty, in the sense that it's a Google Home, meaning you can talk to it. Well, we don't call them Google Homes anymore, but whatever. Uh, you can talk to it, and it will issue commands, or it will take commands. Um, it, it's also a speaker, so you could play music through it, an audiobook or whatever it is. Um, it, it's also, it, it could potentially replace and augment a device you might have already been using. So, for example, we have out in our sunroom a Google Home Mini that we actually never really use. But because you want to be able to hear it and you want to be able to talk to it, it's kind of out. And it's, you know, it's got fabric on it. It's kind of nice looking. So we could replace that. I'm not going to, but we could replace it with one of these things. Yeah. And it would do these three different things, right? So it would also improve the Wi-Fi out in the storm room if I needed such a thing, and I don't. But, I mean, that's that's actually useful. I made fun of the, you know, <laughs> Google made a Wi-Fi router that has a speaker built into it, and I kind of, you know, made fun of that. But actually, um, if you're in the Google ecosystem, and people are, I am, uh, for better or worse, um, that is, yeah, that's useful. Now, for someone like me, I have Google Homes around the house. I have the Google Wi-Fi already there is nothing, there's no reason to upgrade uh, or buy new stuff. I mean, this doesn't, yeah. this isn't in any way better than what I already have. Other than, I guess I could have, I mean, up by my TV, I have a Google Home Mini and uh, the Wi-Fi router. So I guess I could have one thing there, you know, at the so cost of So I was, as you know, and a lot of the viewers know, 
I redid the network in my house over the last uh, couple of months, yeah. uh, over the yeah. summer. It, it started becoming a problem because I put these soundproof doors. They're actually exterior doors uh, closing in the studio now. Before, I used to have a curtain, and yeah. that's the way, because of the kids, I had to get soundproofing. So these doors yeah. are... You were like the guy from the uh, Visit, Wizard of Oz before. Yes, I was. You, just you would just back crack the open in. the curtain and come walking out for dinner or whatever. You just peek in. Um, yeah. <laughs> now I, I have to get it because the kids are running around. I can't, you know, they're, they're older now and they're playing. So I can't be like, okay, everybody go upstairs. I got to record. These doors are really soundproof, but because they're metal, the Wi-Fi signal is not able to kind of penetrate this. So my signal got weaker in the house because of <laughs> these doors. So if oh, I'm, okay. then, yeah. if yeah. I'm in the, the, the front room, which mm -hmm. is like the gym and like where the kids play, I can't get any Wi-Fi there. My my Fire TV is not in, and we're talking less than twenty feet. But I could get Wi-Fi upstairs because of the way that the signal's going, it just it didn't work. So I, uh, because Netgear was advertising with us, I was able to. They sent over a couple routers, so I set up the Netgear router. But I also through Verizon got their Wi-Fi extender, which connects straight to coax, and. Right. It's able to create another router in another room. I got two of these now, and I got mm -hmm. the Netgear, so my entire house is covered with yeah. you know gigabit yeah, yeah. at this point. Yep. But if I didn't have that option through, let's say Verizon, that you know, I don't want to run cables. And no, but I don't... your house is ideal for a mesh network of some kind, yeah. right? And m mine is too. I mean, it's just it's big enough that I I need I can't. There's no such thing as like one wireless point in the middle of the house that's going to work. It, it just it's just too big. And, um, you know, we have three of the Google units. It's fine. And in your case, because of a variety of reasons, the size of the house, plus the, all the shielding that occurred there. I found it interesting that they, they said uh, with this system, with the, wi the Nest Wi-Fi, uh, you could cover up to 85% of your home. Not 100%, 85%. I'm curious how they got that stat. Yeah, I don't... I mean, you know, <laughs> maybe I'm missing something, but I, I and maybe, you know, um, they sell obviously the single unit, but don't, they also sell like a three pack, right? Yeah. It's, it's not a two pack. They sell a two pack and a three pack. Oh, they do sell the two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's yeah. interesting. It's I was a two say, pack and a three so they can say that, but they're selling a three pack, you know, um, let me look at it. Uh, anyway, I, I'm I, curious look. if it only comes in a two, in a, in a two pack now. Yeah. That's what I'm looking at now. So, yeah. It's a uh, pre-order only. Yeah, you know, look, it's it's a nice look. Um, yeah, no, it's two and three. They have they have a two and a three. A yeah, so they have a the router and then they have the point, uh, yeah. Wi-Fi point. So the the router is one sixty nine by itself. Then the Wi-Fi points are one fifty each. The three pack is three forty nine, and uh, is actually available right now if you want. And it covers it up to fifty four hundred square feet, which is more than enough for most most people. Yep. Oh, if you're yeah, living sure. in a, if your house is well, over 5,400 your... square feet, you, yeah, you yeah. know, you're doing good. <laughs> yeah. You don't care if you got to get the other one. <laughs> yeah, you can afford the other, the other yeah. point. Um, so the, the, the number that they provide on the two, the router endpoint, the two piece set is mm -hmm. 3,800 square feet. And uh, yeah, I, I, that's absolutely big enough for most people. I mean, the, the last, it I don't know. See, what it wouldn't cover me. Yeah, I mean, the last house I lived in was uh, 1,600 square feet. <laughs> so, right. you know, that would be more than enough. I mean, here it's probably more than 3,800. By the way, before I, get, before I get the comments of Andrew's house is bigger than 3,800 square feet, it is, but it's not like big in the sense of like a, a yeah. beautiful big house. It's well, big Andrew, in the you sense gotta, of tall. You got to cover the servants' quarters, and then you've got the, <laughs> the horse stables. The horse stables. Actually, I did, <laughs> I, in all seriousness, yeah. my, my garage was a horse stable. Right. So right. that is probably, that yeah. is true. No, yeah. it, it's big, like going up because it's three active, like three, four full. Yeah, yeah, no, you don't have to explain. Of course. I, I mean, always feel like I got it because here's the thing. I either get yeah, like, oh, oh, look at you sitting in your ivory tower, you know. By the way, if you are, if your home, if you consider your home to be an ivory tower, you're in the dungeon part of it. I'm in the so, worst part. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it may be an ivory tower, but like where your office is. No. It's not it's an like ivory tower. Floor. Yeah, it's a hundred and eighteen year old house that that that's a money pit. Right. Um, <laughs> right. It's endless. Uh, so yeah, I, listen, I think this is a cool design. Time. I think the design is beautiful. I, I think this is great. Yep. If you're looking to expand, expand your Wi-Fi, why not get mm -hmm. this? If you're already in the Google, or replace you know, the Wi-Fi. Really, rip or and replace. replace. It, yeah. 
you know. Listen, I, I'm most Wi Fi systems, most people have a very old Wi Fi system in their house. They just get whatever they get, yeah, and no, that's I, it. it just stays like that. We, we, in our old house, we had spent a bunch of time and money uh, bringing wired networking to most of the house. And when we moved here, it's a much bigger place. Uh, we had a, I mean, just a ton of electrical work, like tens of thousands of dollars worth of electric work. There was no way we were going to spend money wiring this house for Ethernet or whatever. So given that, a mesh network is what makes sense. I have had no problems at all with this Google Wi-Fi thing. Like, it works great. I, I assume, it can, I can't really know for sure, but there's no reason to believe otherwise. Like, the, I'm sure this new one's fantastic. And so the additional capabilities, whatever you want them or you don't, if you don't want them, by the way, buy the old one. You know, it's the same thing. It works great. Yeah. Uh, let's move on to the Nest Mini. So this was the Home Mini previously, but since everything is falling under the Nest umbrella, yep. not the Home umbrella, they got rid of the home branding. Uh, it comes with a new wall mount. They got rid of the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Uh, bizarre that they decided yeah. to do that. I don't. Yeah. I guess maybe people aren't using. It has improved audio, increased maximum volume, two times well, the base. <laughs> Andrew, yeah. it's a mini. It's a mini. So there's only room for one hole in it. So only. I hole, guess that's why you have to hold a screw. <laughs> you like to connect to a screw yeah. on the wall. By the way, um, I don't. I'm okay with the thing having a, a wall mount. Obviously, I, I. Other than the fact that you'll have a wire hanging down from it. Well, right? you know how I have. I actually have a mount that goes on the outlet, so yeah. it's magnetic. So mine, right. I, I, it's like a, okay. it's, it's rubber it based, right and okay. it has a magnet on the back, and it clips, and it like stays on, and then you just yep. plug it in from the back. It, it works so well. So all my Google okay. Homes are connected that way. Uh, my mini. Do you remember remember the podcast studio thing we had built in my old house, and the yeah. way the electrician did the wiring for the wiring was so brilliant. He cut a hole in a wall and cap, you know, cap. It was a nice cap, and then there was a um, and it had like the the kind of wire brush on it, mm -hmm. so you could kind of stick wires through it, and they would be held in there. It was nice. And then it went down through the wall, and they had the same little thing with the wire mesh. And the, oh yeah, he did a great job wire. because I I ran the cabling in there, and it was yeah, so it was phenomenal. really it was yeah. He that guy was fantastic. I miss him desperately. But you're not going to do something like that for forty nine dollar Nest Mini. No. Like, wh what are you going to dangle this thing down on a wall? Like, I I don't quite understand that. I I have to say, so look, there's nothing wrong with Google Home Mini, or Nest Mini, whatever we're calling it now. But if you want this kind of thing, fine, it's fine. But when you look at what Amazon just announced, you kind of sense the 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 thing that they missed, which was rather than having a you know a little mount in the back, or you could still have it. Who cares? It doesn't hurt anything. But the the better feature would have been a built-in LED clock, you know. Yeah. Like the Amazon whatever it's called, the Echo Dot or whatever it has. Yeah. Uh. So this is where this announcement came off. Like I had no idea what they were talking about. They actually announced a Pixel, a new Pixel Go. Uh, Google's yeah. latest Chrome device is a classic clamshell laptop, 13.3 inch display, full HD or 4K, up to an i7 processor, up to 256 gigs of storage, front yeah. firing speakers, three and a half millimeter headphone jack. It comes uh, with clean, minimalistic design, built for portability, <laughs> it comes in, in just black uh, and what? not pink, and it starts at 649. A couple of years I want ago. You, I want you to talk about this. Yeah. Um, HP used to sell a little cheap uh, white plastic Chromebook for kids. It had uh, the, the four you know Google colors in a stripe on the back. It reminded me very much of this Pixel, Pixel Book Go or whatever they're calling it. What Google had been doing with Pixels, Pixel Books, I should say, is creating like a premium Chromebook experience. They were very early on in the game with USB-C. They were an early adopter of three by two displays. Um, and they and they had uh, incredible industrial design. They were beautiful devices for the day, and um, they didn't sell very well. Of course, they're very expensive. So they've really gone down market on this, and that's it's it, obviously it's good in some ways. But what you're losing here is the quality of construction. You're losing the three by two display, and Google has basically just created something that's already in the market. You know, and yeah, it's got a whatever rubber bottom. I mean whatever i think the hp thing actually had something like that too by the way i don't think it was ribbed for your pleasure but i think it was rubber on the ball i don't know but i i, I don't this is there's not the, the problem it, the problem with it is there's nothing wrong with it but there's nothing exceptional or interesting about it either you know and when you talk about like a 649 starting price and you mentioned it can go up to core i7 it can go up to 60 uh, 16 gigs of ram 
it can go up to, I think it was 512 gigs of storage or whatever. That's not, that product is not 649. The 649 product is an M3 processor. It's uh, probably eight gigs of RAM and I don't know, the storage is probably 128 or something. It's not, that's not exceptional. I mean, there are, they're really high quality HP and Acer, especially, but also Dell, Lenovo, who else, Chromebooks in that price range. And there's nothing special yeah. about this. That, that That's the issue. It's, it's, it's fine. I, I do think they need to have, uh, this is like when Microsoft went to, um, and made uh, Surface Laptop after making so many other kinds of Surface PCs. Finally, they bowed to the pressure and they just made a normal laptop, you know? And that's kind of what Google's doing. It's like, okay, we tried. We did the the tablet two-in-one thing last year. We did the the version of the Pixel that could flip over, you know, the, before that. Nobody wants these things. They're too expensive. You know, let's just give the market what they want. And so I don't think, I just don't think it differentiates in any meaningful way. It's not bad, right? But it's, it's not bad, not, but it's not great. Yeah, it's just nothing special about it. So uh, next was their next generation Google Assistant. And uh, they just did text-to-speech. <laughs> That's what it was. Yeah, apparently uh, there has been no transcription capability available anywhere in the world. Um, Google has been doing transcription for a long, long time and uh, in different places. Like they do it for, if you're a Google Fi customer, uh, they'll do it for voicemails. And so they'll actually send you a text message where you can read it instead of going and listening to it, which is kind of nice, you know. So it, it's probably no surprise that like a lot of other high-tech companies these days, they're doing AI. They have this capability. It works pretty well. But, uh, you know, recording a meeting and having it transcribe it, I mean, I, that's that capability exists. Like that's not, it's neat. Yeah. Like it's built in. So good. But. We already we've had this feature. If we've you had need this it for a long time, it's there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before we go on to the main event here, and that's the Pixel Four and the Pixel Four XL, I want to remind everybody: if you enjoy the podcast, if you're listening, if you're watching, head on over to Patreon, fund us there. You get access to our bonus show, What the Talk, uh, each and every week. You go to Patreon.com/slash What the Tech. You can fund us as as little as one dollar per episode, or as much as you want, actually, and uh, you could join. And watch our, you know, we do bonus shows at the end of this and we talk about a number of topics. It's whatever comes to mind. Uh, so you get more Paul and Andrew there. Patreon.com slash what the tech. So let's uh, go into this. They announced the Pixel 4 and the Pixel 4 XL. We had already mm -hmm. seen all the leaks and all the images and Google had a billboard out. Uh, they did not spend a lot of time talking about the hardware. They did, however, talk <laughs> yeah. a lot about the camera. So yeah, they did. They, they Let's are talk doing about the hardware yeah. real quick. Just yeah, so go quick. ahead. Um, the, every year they have at least one fun color. This year it's this orange color. Just in time for Halloween. It's fun. Um, white and black. I think the white is particularly striking. Um, I actually pre-ordered an orange. Clearly one, white, Paul. It's it's just black and clearly white. <laughs> yeah, clearly white. Yeah, um, it is clearly white. That's true. So uh, I, I think they're. You know what are you going to do with a phone? So they have a double, what they're calling a double camera, double lens design. So you've got that square thing in the back. It's not as kind of big and bulky as the iPhone three camera system, whatever. But that this is the way phone cameras are. So whatever. Um, what they did do though is now <laughs> they've actually gone back to the type of bezel we used to see on, I want to say like the Pixel two XL, on uh, some of the Samsung designs, like the, the Samsung Galaxy S eight. S8 Plus had yeah. this kind of like slightly taller forehead pix, uh, bezel. Sm bezel on the bottom too, where there doesn't have to be a bezel, but I assume that has something to do with the speaker and so forth. Um, and then they, the, the only attention they paid to it was to say, hey, look, we've got this radar capability built in in the motion sensor for the camera because uh, they're doing facial ID, which by the way, they brushed past because what this means is there's no fingerprint sensor. So they don't have one on the back. They don't have one on the front. They don't have one built into the screen. It it is purely facial recognition. That is an inc that no Android maker has ever done anything like that because to date, Android facial recognition has been completely insecure. Uh, and you know because uh, you know you've used an iPhone that um, Apple has done a tremendous job with Face ID. Better, it way better. Like I, I mean, yeah. I I've done the Samsung facial recognition, and. You shouldn't it's, well well, <laughs> well it's I not mean, it's it's not secure i mean it literally it warns you when you turn it on yeah you know? it's not secure but 
when you talk about speed and accessibility and ease of use, it's Apple's the best. is far. I mean, just just yeah. and Samsung's only, is pretty good. It's leaps and bounds. It's, ahead. By the way, it's pretty good, but it's not safe. See, that's the thing. Apple's is secure, and uh, no one no one distrusts that it works. Like with Samsung, you, they warn you when you turn it on. Apple never says, "Hey, by the way, if you do this, there's a something percent chance." No, it's going to work fine. Samsung, uh, OnePlus, it doesn't matter who the I'm not, I shouldn't call it anyway. It doesn't matter who you are. Uh, Huawei, whatever. That stuff is just not secure. So has Google in one generation jumped to the point where Apple is, where Microsoft is actually with Windows Hello on PCs? I don't, I don't know. You know, I don't know. They didn't, they didn't go into too much detail about it. They didn't, I don't think they talked about it almost at all. I mean, I, no. you know, they basically kind of skipped over it. So I know, obviously, with the Pixel, the camera's job one. It's what everyone cares about. But, I, you know, if you're going to use this as your phone, there's this whole other thing going on, too. you got to pay attention to all of it. So, you know, we'll see. I, I don't – look, the be, the bezel needs to be called out. I think it's okay. You know, It's fine, yeah. It's certainly um, better than that stupid notch they had last year. Motion sense, Paul? Motion what sense. do you think? Well, of that? that's the for the for the for the for the face ID thing, whatever they're calling. No, it. no, no. Well, the, I'm sorry, they're gestures. Yeah, the address. You like the yeah. Samsung. Remember the was it the Galaxy S7 or something? Whatever they did I that. Was that was the five. big thing. You were going to sit there like a magician, I think waving a stuff off. And yeah, they they're going into that. So the here's main the event. Problem, here's thing. the problem with an air gesture, Andrew. Like, let's say we're sitting in a bar, and your phone rings, and I'm next to you, and I'm like, you know what? I don't want you to pick up this call. I could just wave in front of your phone. It will. We'll just hang up on him. Like, it's just stupid. Really dumb. Uh, it's not for me, to be honest. No. I, I know nope. somebody's going to say that they, they can find a use know. for this, but not for me. No, um, it's like the stupid pen gesture thing they did in the Note 10 Plus. Like, you're going to sit there like a like a maestro in front of, <laughs> like, flicking through photos? Like, is anyone, <laughs> are you kidding me? I, I Look, some people will try it just to see what it's all about, and then they will laugh, and they will never use it again. It's ridiculous. There we go. I had okay, to mute myself Let's talk for about coughing. I had to mute myself <laughs> for coughing, and I forgot that I muted myself. Uh, the camera was the the big part of this. It has live oh, yeah. HDR plus, which I, is very useful. Uh, yep. Motion mode, dual exposure, improved portrait, oh, and night sight mode, upgraded battery, blah blah blah. So let's talk about the camera. You know what they did? I, I, I the, look. We we some of this is leaked. We knew you, you were going to be able to take a picture of stars. And not just stars, but like that shape of the galaxy thing you can sometimes the see. The galaxy. No you can take a picture of the freaking galaxy. Yeah, Google, I mean, Apple's like, look, we can take pictures in the dark now. You know, like Samsung, like our, uh, Google had two years ago. Yeah, that's cute. We can take pictures of galaxies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's 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 an incredible claim. But aside from that, uh, which is incredible, but I think more from like a day-to-day thing, the thing that they got, and I, I hope this was clear to everybody because they – there were two sliders on the screen. In other words, you're, 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 you're taking a picture of a scene. And that scene maybe has, like, they had a demo where it was like light coming in from a window. We've all done this, right? You're looking at the scene in the viewfinder and it's kind of washed out because of the light. So you click on screen where the light source is and then that makes the rest of the scene really dark. And the way that the Google phones have worked in the past, the pixels, is then you take the picture and then it does its little computational thing. And you look at the picture you took and you're like, that that looks better than reality. <laughs> like, well, what what did they just do there? Well, what they're doing now is now you see what it's going to look like before it comes out, and then you've got the two sliders where you can uh, on the fly change brightness, which a lot of phones have. Um, the One Plus phones do this. The iPhone does this. I think the No Plus off the top of my head, I'm not sure, but I think they do it. But they had that second slider, and that second slider I think was for was it for white balance or for um, Shadows. It was probably for shadows, I guess. And it gives you that ability to adjust it, see what the picture is going to look like, and then take it, right? And not get that surprise at the end. Because as good as those pictures were, and the, the pixels have been amazing in low light situations for a long time, you take when you take the picture, you you, you, you had to kind of look at it afterwards and you would be blown away. Yeah. But you'd be like, wow, that's that's not what I just saw. That's not what I just saw. And it's yeah. way better looking than what reality looks like. Yeah. Well, I have the same thing on the yeah, iPhone, by the way. The iPhone has yeah. the same issue where right. you, when you like, especially with the night mode shots, 
mm-hmm. because it's compiling. Oh, multiple of course, exposures. you have no idea what you're taking. A you have no idea yeah. what you're taking. So yeah. when I first started doing, I'm like, this looks like crap, and I was like playing, fiddling with the exposure. Mm-hmm. I stopped doing that, and I just yeah. held my phone steady, and I'm like, wow, this is remarkable compared to what I was viewing. Right. Right. Yeah. So I mean, uh, some of the computational photography stuff is well, for, uh, Google. I feel like Google. I don't want to say invented it. I mean, they've certainly been at the forefront of it. I think Google has been doing this kind of computational photography since day one, whatever. Apple talks about it a lot too, but they use some of the same techniques. You take uh, a number of overexposed shots, you combine them together, you do your HDR magic, you get rid of the noise by combining the, uh, the dark spots together from the multiple takes. And the result is this picture that has high contrast, is very colorful, uh, it doesn't have blown out lights. It has like stunning blacks. It's the overall effect is fantastic. And, uh, you know, um, this is something they've always been, they've been, they were at the forefront of it. They've always been the best at it among the best at it. Huawei yeah. in some ways is caught up too, but, um, I think this is them reestablishing their, I call it su- not dominance, but like superiority. Like I, the, the other ones are all good. It doesn't, diminish what is possible in an iphone of course the new iphones by the way i agree with them other phones At, you know the the ultra wide lens on my phone i never use that rarely it's a rarity for me to ever even use that uh i and they said it in this in this event where they saw they thought a really good telephoto lens is way better than a ultra wide wide lens so, I, and i agree with them Here's the problem I have with that. <laughs> um, some of the r- recent phones that do have ultra wide, uh, their their previous phone, by the way, the three XL had ultra wide on the selfie camera. That's actually incredibly useful because that is uh, useful. At nor- yeah, at a normal arm length, you can get the effect of having a selfie stick where it's, the camera's way out there without having to carry a selfie stick and look like a tourist in Paris or whatever. But um, as far as like a normal rear camera ultra wide, that's the title shot, of your next book, right? A selfie, yeah, self, <laughs> a tourist yeah, a selfie in Paris. Stick, a selfie stick in Paris. Um, <laughs> it'll be, it'll be, on all, it'll be about all the times I got beat up. Um, <laughs> the because uh, by the way, uh, there's some, there are some violent reactions to that. Um, but on the rear camera, uh, so again, I'm going to get this wrong because I don't remember exactly. But I, I want to say the One Plus phones from this year, the Note 10 Plus, the iPhone, all have like this ultra wide mode. There, there's a weirdness to it. It's like um, it's like when you t- look at a like a VR shot with a regular camera, and it kind of distorts the view as you look around a little bit. There is a little bit of distortion to it, but it can be stunning in certain circumstances. I took a picture of the Washington Monument last month, where the clouds in this picture appear to be shooting up out of it because it kind of warped mm. uh, the sky. And it, it, honestly, it's it, it's a really attractive view. So I guess anyway, the the short version of what I'm trying to say is. I, I do agree that telephoto is more important than w- ultra wide, but I think having both is as important. And by the way, uh, claiming that you have effectively two X optical zoom means you do not have two X optical zoom, and that's not that impressive. Now, of course, they do a lot of uh, computational photography again, and they did that demo where he said, "Look, make sure you you know pinch to zoom to take the far off shot. That's going to be better than if you crop." on a normal shot. And that makes tons of sense. And I'm sure they do it. You know, the example they had was great, but I'm sure they have, um, they've done something special there, but, uh, you know, five X optical zoom would be better. <laughs> you know, it just, it just would be. And that problem has been solved like through the periscope style, uh, you know, with the mirrored lenses inside and so forth. So next year, uh, I bet they have that. And I bet they have ultra wide too, by the way. Yeah. Uh, overall, I, I think it's a, it's a nice upgrade. If you are, oh, so yep. this was the bizarre thing. So they had a photographer on stage and they did like, I thought I was watching the view. <laughs> it, it, it got, it became a bizarre interview about uh, nothing where the host was asking this photographer. Know, who was this? The, the, I'm not, look, not, not because she was a woman, but that woman who was interviewing Andy, Andy Leibitz was an he, idiot. It was just terrible. I, I, she didn't I, I, have an, first of all, Every time she, she said camera phone, every time she said camera phone, it just, yeah. I, I don't know what other word she could have used, but it sounded no. so Look, like the, out of place. Someone com- someone t- complained to me on Twitter that um, Annie Leibovitz never mentioned the word pixel or Google. 
And fair enough. But you, you got to understand something. Andy Lee was just someone who has credibility, right? Tremendous. She doesn't yeah. care. She's not there to market something for somebody. She will agree. Yeah, she probably agreed that this thing was fantastic. I don't mind appearing. I'm not going to sit there and pimp your product. So obviously they have to bring out this other person and they chose this woman, uh, an attractive young woman, whatever. But I mean, she had like nothing to say. It was it was like a, um, oh God, it, it was just like a team of unequals. I don't know what to call it. Like they I, needed someone, what they should have had was that photographer guy, that research guy, he should have interviewed her. Because oh, yeah. that would have been two experts on equal footing and it would have been more, well, potentially, I mean, who knows what kind of conversation it would have been, but they, they would have at least understood each other. I just feel like they, I don't even know who that woman was, obviously, why would I, but I just thought she was terrible again, not because she was a woman, don't get stupid ideas, but I, I just thought that, like Annie Leibowitz is amazing, but what she was talking about was nothing. <laughs> like, but she also you know, couldn't, she asked her, she was like, do you have any pro tips? I know. And <laughs> I she was like, about this. use, what did she say? She goes. <laughs> Go with it's your gut. You. Go with your inside. No, it's all within you, she said. It's all within you? What? Like, no, what I want to talk about, no, talk to me I about mean, exposure. <laughs> no, I mean, right, exactly. <laughs> now, here's the pro tip, Annie. Uh, why don't you focus on the light switch when you're in a low light situation? Yeah. And then, yeah. you know, so I mean, just, yeah, that was terrible. I, I thought it was, and they had mic issues because they had the, two lapels pointing oh, at each other. Worst. So whoever mic'd them, so... This was something that that I would see, and I, I'm sure a lot of you guys are audio guys too in the audience. But all I could see is the two lapels are Fighting pointing each other. To, pointing at each other, oh, like getting each so other's now, talk. So now they were muting one pot, yeah. not even muting, but they were potting one down and potting one up constantly yeah. throughout the whole thing. I was like, oh my god, this is just a disaster. The, they the spoke about nothing. Was, there was well, nothing look, I, said but words. But we've seen this kind of thing before, so I, I don't remember the companies, but it, most of the tech companies I've already mentioned that have good camera phones, whatever, will bring out some expert, some famous photographer, and say, we let, gave this guy our latest uh, phone, and we sent him off to Antarctica or wherever he went, and here are the pictures they took. Uh, in this case, they decided to bring this person out, and Andy Leibowitz is famous, you know, for sure. Um, but, I mean... She's not like almost too credible. Like she just didn't have anything to say. It was like, it, the, and the problem was this thing got off to a slow start. It stayed at a slow boil for a really long time. And then all of a sudden, finally product, product, product. And you're like, here we go. It's sailing to the end. And then this thing just crashed it right into the ground. And then they ended Which is it. unfortunate. Cause again, like I said, Andy Leibowitz is amazing, but. Um, I mean, what, what do you expect? Right. It. It's a really good camera phone, right? It's a really good camera on the phone. And she's yeah. a, a phenomenal photographer that's using yeah. gear along with this. So she's definitely using a tripod. She's definitely using other things. She knows what which to look for. She understands, fine, you know. she understands, you know, she understands, you know, where where the subject should be in regards to the lighting, all that stuff. Yeah. Of course, you're going to get good photos. Right. I right. mean, there's right. nothing. Well, that's, that's what someone else said. Though. But. You know, in other words, someone said, someone defending Apple said, well, of course, these pictures look good. They're using, you know, professional photographers. And uh, yeah, so does Apple, idiot. <laughs> like yeah. every, of course, like everyone does this. The, the the test is when you take it out in the world yourself and you start taking pictures and you've seen this, you went out into the world with the uh, new iPhone and you took pictures at night and they're great. And you're yeah. like, wow, this is a capability that I never had before. And it's, this is a nice <laughs> addition, you know? And so I, I, you know, I, for people who are Pixel fans, we've already had that kind of thing. The, the photo quality has been fantastic for a long time. Um, look, I, I will, like everyone else, if I'm ever in the middle of nowhere, point this phone at the sky at night and take pictures of the galaxy if I can. I'd like, that would be neat. But I'm, that's not going to be, you know, that's not the normal thing. I mean, so... It looks like what they've, I see, that's why I said, I used that example before with the room they had with the light coming in through the window. That's normal. Like that kind of thing is going to impact people day to day. It's a big deal. Like night sight or whatever they call it on your phone is fantastic. It, sometimes if you spend a lot of times in bars, <laughs> you know, like yeah. we do, I guess. Uh, yes. Hey, it's listen, very 20 days. I have not had a drink. Oh, stop. I swear you to God. You had a 20... sort of drink when I saw you. I, I no, I drank soda. Oh, you, I had I seltzer. You had, oh, I thought you were drinking something else. No, oh, I did. I did have a drink. I did have a drink. Yeah. You're right. Well, no, I it was did. a partial. I would call it a, it wasn't a full relapse. It was a it vodka was a, soda. It was a vodka. Yeah. Not that yeah, I'm not yeah. drinking. It's just, I, I can't. I'm, I'm dying. The point is, but you are still in bars. And in I, those I'm situations, still in bars. <laughs> you know, low light, whatever, 
these cameras all work right now. And that's neat. But I think that the the more common day-to-day thing is, you know, you're walking around, you see something you want to take a snapshot of, or, you know, the city's beautiful this day, or I walk in the woods because I live in the middle of nowhere, whatever it is. Yeah. Like you want that stuff to work well. And I think that the thing that the biggest change that they made was that stuff because the pixel is already fantastic, but that thing, I think that, I think that's a huge deal. I really do. Uh, overall you ordered yours, obviously you ordered the XL. I ordered it before the event even ended. (laughs) And by the way, good thing I did because I can't get it anymore. So I ordered the orange 128 gig XL. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am contemplating. I gotta, I gotta get rid of some of my, my phones. I paid off the, uh, the Samsung yeah. finally, mm-hmm. cause it was yep. like on the monthly, uh, I paid it off. I had like a hundred and something dollars left and I was like, Hey, you know what? Let me just pay it off. Uh, mm-hmm. so I do want to get rid of the Samsung cause I, I, I don't think I'm ever going to buy another Samsung. And which Samsung is it? S nine plus. Yeah. So here's what I want to do. I have an S seven. I have mm-hmm. an S nine. I have an S seven plus. I have an S nine plus. I have an iPhone seven plus. Yep. Can you I just do one big thing at uh, Gazelle? Just send maybe them I all should in just do. Once. Yeah, maybe that's what I should do. Just send you want, them. What all you want to do is go to a place that's going to send you money. You know, not give you credit yeah. somewhere unless you're buying a phone. Like if it, no, no, no. I do want to. No, like, I want to buy this phone, but I don't want to. No, buy no, it. I know, but you can only trade in one of them, right? So the thing is, what you want to do is see what they would give you, and then go see what Gazelle or whoever else. Like you can pick other places, but. Um, you'll probably get more for it somewhere else, frankly. You know, probably. In most cases, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think I'm going to do that because I don't need this many phones and I don't need two iPhones. <laughs> you, don't, I, you don't need seven <laughs> phones. And... But I do I do want to be in this ecosystem. I do want to see, you know, the latest in, and the greatest. Which I ecosystem? decided uh, in the Google, like Google, pure Google ecosystem. Yeah. I have to tell you, I don't think I'll ever buy another Samsung phone. I, I was very disappointed with this one. It just wasn't great. It was good, but it wasn't great. And the S9 was supposed to be, you know, a good one. It wasn't a skip year. It was an evolutionary yeah. year. Yeah, right, right, right. A- and they, they, it just, it just feels crappy after like six months. Right. And, and listen, yeah. I, I'm sure there are people that are totally happy with there, but I use it in a very different manner. I use that phone and I overanalyze everything that they're doing. Here's what I'll say about this. Um, Obviously, you can take amazing photos with um, any number of the latest smartphones, even uh, like phones like the the OnePlus 7 Pro, which uh, has issues, especially with Zoom, or the OnePlus 7T um, will take fantastic photos. The iPhone will take fantastic photos. The Samsung, uh, I don't have an S10, but um, the same camera system the Note 10 plus you, you can absolutely take excellent photos but the problem is you have to kind of babysit them you have to look at them you want to make sure because sometimes they're just a little washed out and they're not as good as they can be um the difference between the google pixels and and i would say the huawei's too although depending on how you like your photos they may be even too contrasty and too much hdr um those two sets of phones pixels and huawei's you you never have to worry about it. Like they're they're amazing. Like they're just amazing. So if, like for, for you know for photography specifically, it's I, there just isn't really anything like it. And I see these people who uh, they'll do camera tests. They'll do side by tests. You can look at the pictures yourself. You know, and it's like yeah, we think the iPhone's better than the Pixel. And it's like I, okay, <laughs> it's, it's it's really not because it's not. You could take twelve pictures or something, and you pick the best twelve from any camera and you do the side by side and you're like, look, the iPhone went one, but the problem is I use these things over a long period of time and the iPhone's fantastic. And yeah. it, the night stuff is much better. It's still not as good as the pixel three XL. It's just, it's not, not overall, you know? So anyway, I guess my, sorry, I, I beat everything to death, but you will not be disappointed in the camera in this thing. I can't say anything about the quality, the reliability, whatever. We'll see how that goes. But, um, but the camera, yeah, what did this do? Be... What does this do to the uh, to the Pixel Three pricing? Uh, what do you mean? Uh, let me go to store.google. You can still, in other buy words, you can still 3. buy a Pixel Three. Like, what did it do? Yeah. To it? Oh, I don't know. I, I wasn't even. So they they're still selling the three. So the three. I don't for think sale. they typically sell the previous gen um, normally. Like for you can over buy a long for time. a Pixel Three XL is five ninety nine. 
And you should never buy that. That phone is not worth getting at almost any price. <laughs> so the, the XL. Like, yeah, you got the XL specifically. If you okay. like the smaller phone, the Pixel 3 is actually a fantastic phone. So that it's does not have... right now, the Pixel 3. It, yeah, but I... I yeah. From $799. Yeah. So the Pixel 3a, let's see what so, this one's at. But it's still well, available. Well, that one is not out of market. So that one will be the normal pricing, I'm sure. Let's see. Yeah, $399. Three eighty or yeah, four seventy nine. dollars Yeah. yeah. yeah so... so um, at some point, probably in the spring, they'll probably do a 4A and a 4A XL. But the way that Google has done this in the past, and I assume this is what's happening now, is uh, those the prices come down. There'll be Black Friday stuff, and the price will come down again, and then they just get rid of what they have. Yeah, you know, yeah. they're not so, going to keep. In other words, they don't pull an Apple. They don't keep the previous gen in market for another, you know, two three years. Yeah, but you know what though? If you're looking for a phone and you don't care about getting the latest one, and you want to get a Google phone. Four ninety nine is not a bad price point to be at. Except that that phone is terrible. The Pixel Three. The camera is fantastic. The phone itself is terrible. So why is the Pixel Three A better than the Pixel Three? This is, well, so it's better and worse. It depends on what it is. So the camera system is almost identical. It's not exactly identical, but for all intents and purposes, you get the same camera quality. That's been my experience. The camera is fantastic. Um, where where you suffer with the Three A is in two primary areas. The big one is performance. It has a mid-level Snapdragon 600 something. I don't remember exactly. Um, the performance difference is noticeable and it hits in all kinds of areas. It hits all the time. It's a constant problem. Um, the bigger, no, not the bigger, that's the bigger issue. The other issue is just the storage. Um, that camera, that phone comes with 64 gigs of storage and that's it. There's no option for more. You can't pay to get more. You can't expand it later with micro SD. So mm. 64 is it. If 64 works for you, and you can put up with a little slowness here and there. And and again, I, I'll just give you a couple of examples, one of which isn't hugely damaging and one which has proven hugely damaging. Um, when you take a picture with the uh, Pixel 3 XL, it lacks the hardware um, special chip that Google made for the 3 series. So it does the computational photography stuff, but it does it using the processor. So it takes a long time. So you take a picture, you go to see how it is, and it says, wait, processing. And it takes several seconds. Several seconds maybe doesn't sound like a lot of time, but on a 3 or a 3XL, it just happens. Um, and that's not a huge problem. You get used to that. It's not a big deal. You don't have to take a picture, review, take a picture, review. It's, you know, you just take pictures. It's fine. But the the thing that I bumped into all the time was, um, well, two things. When I, uh, I play music over Chromecast, and if I use a 3XL, the app loses the connection with the music that's playing. And the on-screen controls don't work anymore. I can't do. I, I have to reset it. Like it's, it's something that doesn't happen with any other phones. It's just a performance thing. The other one is if you use the uh, the voice feature. I, I use voice to send text messages. So you hit the little microphone button and you start dictating. You're like, hey Jonathan, I wanted to see if you were free on blah blah blah. Because of the performance problem, I hit the mic and then it actually says in the little thing above the keyboard, please wait. You you don't really think about it, and. It doesn't catch the hi, Jonathan, I want to. It starts with see if you, you know what I mean? Wow. And that bites me every time because I keep forgetting that because it, you know, every other phone on earth, it just works. Like the microphone just works. You don't, you don't wait for it, but the performance is so bad. Um, that kind of thing happens. So those are the big ones for me. Uh, there are others, but it, it's just, it's a problem. So like I said, if you want to save some money, get a previous gen device, if you can stand the smaller size, Get the three and get the amount of storage you want. I don't know how they changed that or whatever. It's probably 64, 128. Um, do not get the three XL. There are huge problems with that phone as well. And those are related to the tinniness of the speakers, the uh, unbalanced nature of the speakers, because that one side is stronger than the other. It's not really, you know, it's in stereo, but it, it's louder over here. It's kind of terrible. And you can hear it. You can actually feel the phone vibrating as it plays audio because it's bouncing off the inside of it. Oh my god! And it it makes it sound. You can hear it. It, it kind of warbles like it's it's terrible. It's too bad. Terrible. And then that huge notch, of course, it's terrible. Well, Paul, this was the uh, the event. This was our uh, show about the Google event. <laughs> yep. Uh, we're going to do a bonus show analysis. now. Uh, following this, so if you want to hear us continue talking about tech stuff, uh, you could you could subscribe to our bonus show, patreon.com slash what the tech. I am in tremendous pain right now. Oh. My entire chest is killing me as I'm talking, and it hurts more 
as I'm doing this. So I, I try to do this like a normal person, but I'm starting to fall apart. So I think it's a good time to end it. Uh, yep. For all things Paul, go to therot.com. Anything coming up on therot.com? Um, nope. nope. <laughs> I mean, we're gearing up for Ignite, right? So the big yeah. Microsoft event of the year is happening first week of November. So everyone's going down to Florida for that. But uh, no, nothing. I mean, today, obviously, the big stuff is the Pixel event. And then... Um, Which yeah. you're going to record a show with Brad, right? So actually, as it turns out, he I contacted him to see if I could move it. And he said, actually, I can't do it today because he had some construction guys show up at his house. Awesome. And they're this digging out his, yeah, like they're, his basement's getting blown up. <laughs> so this will <laughs> fill in for that today. This will fill yeah. in for that today. Yeah, so uh, of- this show should be posted soon. Uh, Suncast, our great editor, should uh, should be posting this within, I guess, within an hour or two. He's pretty quick with this stuff. So we'll have it up on therot.com, of course, on gfknetwork.com. Also, we're going to record What to Talk right now. So if you're listening to this, hop on over to patreon.com slash what to tech and listen to our bonus show there. We'll see you next time. Take care.